you ever gotten something that's limited edition? Something that's special because it's one of a kind. It doesn't come out that often or it only has a limited number. Hey, I'm Adriana and I don't know about you, but when I'm so used to having an original version of something, I cannot wait to check out the limited edition version. Sometimes it can be tough to choose which version I like more, which made this game that I play with some friends really difficult. school, we didn't have the limited edition things that you have, but one time I did get to interact with a very special limited edition item. A few years ago, I visited Washington DC and while I was there, I went to the Smithsonian Museum of Natural History. Now I know, I said the word museum and some of you just fell asleep. I can actually hear your snores from here. But chill for a sec, wipe the sleepy drool off your face and just stay with me. Was it amazing to see the Bert and Ernie puppets from Sesame Street? Um, yes it was. I freaked out like I was meeting a celebrity instead of, you know, puppets. And another thing that was amazing to see was the hat that Abraham Lincoln actually owned. But the coolest thing I got to see while I was there were Dorothy's ruby red slippers from the movie, The Wizard of Oz. Now there are a lot of ruby slippers out there. You can actually buy them online. And I know because I had done that before. But are any of them the actual ruby red slippers that Dorothy wore on her tiny little Dorothy feet? Are you kidding me? No, talk about limited edition. Talk about one of a kind. Now chances are at some point you've heard someone say something like you are unique or maybe you are special. And you know what? It's true. Those aren't sweet, mushy phrases. You're different than everyone else on the planet. And there's something really cool about knowing that we were made to be unique. But if I'm honest, it doesn't always feel that way, right? Because sometimes the things that make us feel unique also feel like the things that make us stand out and not in the way that we want. Maybe you do a specific type of art and not many people get it. Or maybe your voice is changing and sounds different and so you get teased about it. You could be taller than everyone else or live in a different part of town or have interests that nobody seems to understand. Or maybe you're still trying to figure out who you are while everyone else seems to already know. Yes, there is something about you that makes you special and unique and different. But for whatever reason, that something can also be the thing that makes you feel like you just don't fit in. I mean, in school, you either fit in or you don't. It doesn't seem like there's a lot of room for in between. Now, some of you would love to fit in at school or on your team or in your group or at your home. You would love to not feel like the only one standing out. And others of you might feel the exact opposite. I mean, you want to stand out. You want to be seen as different than other people. Or maybe you're just someone who wants to do both. I mean, you want to find a place to fit in while not having to change or give up the stuff that makes you stand out for who you are. So where does that leave us? Let's go all the way back to when the first humans were on Earth. Earth and find out. The first two humans that we know of to walk the planet were named Adam and Eve. So it's safe to say that if anybody knows what it's like to be a limited edition, it's probably these two. Adam and Eve's story is found in the very first book of the Bible, which is called Genesis. The author actually began the story before Adam and Eve were even made. See, in the first chapter of Genesis, the author told the story about how God created our world and everything in it. Light and dark, land and oceans, plants and animals. It tells us about all the cool, unique things things that God made for us to experience and enjoy. As God made each of these things, he paused to reflect on what he had made and saw that it was good. The mountains, good. The stars, good. Freaky little starfish, so good. You get the idea. But as God looked around at everything that was made, something wasn't quite finished yet. Then God said, let us make humanity in our image to resemble us so that they may take charge of the fish of the sea, the birds in the sky, the livestock, all the earth and all the crawling things on the earth. Think of the most beautiful thing in nature you've ever seen. I wish I could see what you're thinking about right now. I mean, it's so incredible that God created all of that. Yet out of everything God created, something was still missing. Have you guessed what it is yet? Yeah, it's us. Human beings were the final piece of God's perfect puzzle. So God got to work on making them. Let's take a look. God created humanity in God's own image. In the divine image, God created them male and female. God created them. Adam and Eve, 
They were humans made uniquely and specifically in the image of God. Here, divine image means in God's image. It means that God made humans to reflect who God is back to the world. It means that humans were created with value apart from anything that we could say or do or even think. And you know what? So were you and I. We are limited additions, each one made exactly as we are in the image of God. We were created by God with characteristics and qualities that are just like Him. And that's what makes us unique. It's what makes us limited additions. Think of it like this. So this is my mom. Um, I have olive skin and brown hair just like her. My mom is from a small farming town in Puerto Rico and she passed on to me a love for arroz con pollo and Saturday morning cartoons. Now often the adults that we grow up with pass down a lot of things to us. We pick up on their interests, traditions, and if we're related, even physical characteristics. And it's just like that with God too. We have qualities given to us from God that reflect who God is. God created us with characteristics that are just like God. And it gets even cooler. Take Take a look at what God saw in us, the final part of creation. God saw everything he had made. It was supremely good. I mean, did you catch that? When God created the earth and everything in nature, it was good, but there was something that could make it even better. And when God made us, humankind in God's own image, suddenly everything wasn't just good. It was supremely good. Another word for supremely is extremely. So what God made us was extremely good. Here's what I want you to remember today. We are a limited addition. In all of God's creation, we are the only things made in God's image. There are things about ourselves that make us feel different. Those can be the things that make us feel scared or insecure. They can cause us to want to hide what makes us who we are. But remember, as God's creations, we are a limited addition, and that alone gives us value. We don't have to do anything or be anyone for God to love and accept and value us. So the next time you're struggling to remember the way that you are a limited edition, try one of these. First, replace your thoughts with the truth of scripture. Reread Genesis 1, 26 through 31 to start. Second, reach out to a trusted friend or adult who will remind you of what's true about who you are. Next, talk to God about your feelings. Ask God to help you believe the truth about yourself. And last, write down, I am a limited edition, somewhere where you can see it often. When you believe that you and everyone else on earth are made in the image of God, it changes how you see everyone, including yourself. So remember, we, are a limited edition.